let's look in here. Let's look in the other side. Okay. Cotter pin. Okay, pin that over. Okay, we got that. And we got the nut. off now. Get the retainer and the bearing. There it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a clean up in here. Get some brake cleaner. Give it a spray. Uh, I just got some copper anti seize here. I'm just gonna go over the pivot points with it and on the springs a little bit. And uh, I'm not going to dig in too deep here this year on these brakes. They still look pretty good. You know, probably their last year. But, uh, you know, they're not down to the rivets. They're getting a little thinner. But we'll just go with these for this year. And uh, I'm going to paint the drums, mind you. And uh, go with that for now. I think that's okay. And put a little on those springs down there. Protect them a bit. I'm just going to put a little PB blaster in there, not on the shoes, but in around the back here. Just a little bit of protection. can of paint there was I'd left a brush in there you know so uh, that's one way to keep a brush fresh that's been quite a while in there probably a year ah, ah, wipe off the handle away you go that saves time yeah okay this is a rust paint or a rust preventative paint I guess you'd call it all right Tidy those up. You know, doesn't fix everything, but it certainly helps prolong the life. And I'm back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put new bearings, inner and outers, on these brake drums for the trailer. Now here's the old ones when I took it out. And this is the inner one. And this one here kind of came apart when I took it apart because they are, these ones are plastic cages. See that? And so what I did was I went to a shop uh, that sells trailer parts and I got, uh, so these are the inner ones. So there's a new one there with its races and there's the other ones with the race. And then there's uh, two seals that go on the inside. So on this one here, uh, the inner race has been knocked out. So I'm just going to turn this over see that that's the that's the outer race okay and there's an edge on the back of that so so we'll just turn this over and see you can see it down in there we'll just get something on the edge of it a screwdriver and a hammer and we'll knock that out a little bit on each side okay There's that race. 
All right. So we'll just wipe out the bore. And we'll put the new one in. Okay. And that's the outer one. Taper up. Uh -huh. Use that old one to drive that one in, and then I could knock it out because it'll show it'll show past the edge of this one. So I could probably use this one to drive it down. Let's see. Oh, make sure it's turned wide side down. There we go. See here. Yeah, okay, I can see it's touching all the way around now. And I still have that edge showing for the old one, so I'm gonna drive the old one out now. There. That. Around. I'm pushing on the old one now, not the new one. I put it in square side down so I have a loop that I can access to push the other one out. Try and get it nice and even. Okay. Now you see in there that See the new one sitting right down flush with the housing. See it there. Just wipe it off. And there's the old one. I push the old one out and then I use that this way to push the new one in. Just wipe this off. Okay. Okay, all right, that looks good. Now, let's put the race in the back of this one. There. Okay, and here it is here, it's a new one. Now the numbers that you get for your particular hubs are going to be different depending on your hub so i'm not going to give you the numbers for mine this was this one's an l68 110 but that may not that may not be the number you need for yours so you know the best way to get the bearings that you need is to take one of your drums into a place that sells the bearings and seals and they'll they'll size them exactly and then you you come home with the right part you know you're not going to be guessing okay so yeah that goes in there tapered side up Uh, you could use a brass hammer or a brass punch. That would probably be the wisest. But if you're careful, you can do it this way too. Okay, let's put the, the new race on the inside of this one. Okay, so let's just sit it in there like that. And we'll get it started. Just get it started. All right, let's see if we can use that old race the same way to drive.
Okay, that's the surface that the brake actuator, the electric brake actuator, the electromagnet runs into and grabs and pulls the shoe back to activate the brakes. And then this is the, the friction surface down here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pack the bearings to put in here. I got this uh, heavy duty wheel bearing grease and I clean these holes out really good again with brake cleaner and wipe them all out spotless. And these are the bearings that go in the back, the large ones. So I've got this clean, okay? Now clean gloves on, how you pack a wheel bearing is you take the wheel bearing grease, you put a quantity in the palm of your hand, okay? And you hold that seam and you pack, you pack into it like this. Okay, so basically that's it, you just keep, packing, grabbing it like that, and the grease comes out the top and you know that it's completely saturated in there behind the rollers. Okay, and keep going around. Best with a pair of gloves on. Okay, see it coming up the top here like that? And go all the way around. Keep recycling it back into the palm of your hand as you go. Okay, now, All right, okay. All right, I'm all the way around. Now, I'll take that grease, put it down in the hole, like so. Put a good quantity down inside the hub. Like that. Okay. Now that doesn't have to be completely full because you remember you got a shaft that's gonna be in there. You do want to have a little extra in there. Okay, there's that bearing, nice and clean, all greased. Stick it down in there. There's the new seals. New seal like that. Lip side down. And just go gently with a hammer. Like that. easy it's better if you use a you know like a big socket push it down straight but this will work too if you're careful not to distort it I'll try and get it all down in three hits take your time like that and that wants to go down that wants to go down flush with the casing Wipe that off, like so, and then, all right, a little grease on the seal, like that. There, okay, that one's ready to go in. Now let's put the seal in the other one. Okay, so I've just gone through these one more time with some brake cleaner. Make sure there's no grease in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sit it on there and see if I have to move these uh, shoes out a little bit. These are not self-adjusting shoes. So as the shoes wear, you know, you're gonna have less space between the shoe and the drum. Uh, so you have to adjust the manual adjuster here. So I'm gonna have to just sit, slip this on here like that. I'm just gonna see how much, yeah. I think there's quite a bit of adjustment we can bring those out, those shoes. So. There. The adjustment spring down. We'll get the adjuster out and we'll clean this up. I gotta get a little bit of anti seize here. All right, so. Let's put a dab of anti seize on there and some on those threads there. Okay. We can run that in, run that in a bit like that, run it out, and that should spin freely, okay. Now, let's see if we can get that back in there, let's see, 
little farther out than that. Try it like that, maybe. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, now, should be able to adjust it, see? I can move it out. All right, now, we're still gonna have to make sure that that drum will fit on there. We'll make sure the drum fits on, then uh, if everything's good, then we'll put that spring back on. It's a little snug. That's a little snug. Oh, right now. It's close. Okay, I think I'll... That's pretty close. I think what I'm going to do is just back it off a little bit from that adjustment. And then we'll put the spring on. So, there, I'll back it in just a little bit. All right. There's the spring. All right. All right, I got that spring in on the back. Now I just got to bring it forward. There. Okay. Now let's make sure everything's centered. Let's see. Center everything. Okay, let's see if that drum sits on there now. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. It's, I think it's three wheels and then it's not too far, not too far from the from the inside of the drum. Okay. One more spray with brake cleaner. And uh, we can put that on there. Clean off those shoes. Clean out the drum. Okay. All right, that's good. Everything looks okay in there. Put a little dab of put a little dab of anti seize on that pivot point there. Okay, and I got some on those retainer springs and on those ones. There, that looks good. Okay, one last look in there. That looks okay. Okay on like that. Okay, now we got to put our outer bearing in. That's how we get it to come through. You see it's starting to come through. It takes quite a bit of grease to fill a bearing. See it's coming through there? So we're going to pack some grease in there. The bearing is going to push in against all that and move it out of the way. Oh, like so. Okay, now we'll put our bearing in, tapered side in, like that. Okay, now we can clean out the excess. Okay, and then there's the retainer, the flat side, just like that. Okay, and then we got the nut. Castellated side out. Okay, so that socket is inch and a half. So what I'm going to do here, is spin this, tighten that slowly. Not as tight. Now I'm going to back it off just a little bit to align the cotter pin. Okay. So back it up just a little bit. Okay. Like so. Okay. 
Okay. That's good. That's good. Tap that on gently. There you go. Okay. Okay, that's one side. Okay, so just to show how these electric brakes work on these trailers, they have a magnet here, okay? It's an electromagnet. So from your, uh, from your brake controller down through your seven pin connector, when you hook your trailer to your vehicle, you have uh, a positive and a negative wire here. And when you energize this, there's a little electromagnet. And what happens is that magnet wants to stick to the inside of the drum here, to this flat surface here. Okay, and when it does that, now there's left and right uh, orientations for these brakes. Okay, this is the one on the left hand side going that way. So the wheel would be turning this way. Okay, and then when that little magnet is energized, it sticks to the inside of the drum and it gets pulled back. So it, it sticks to the inside of the drum and gets pulled back like this. Okay, and you see what it's doing. It's pivoting up here and it's applying the brakes. It's, it's expanding the shoes so it runs inside the, the, the surface on the drum here and applies the brakes on the trailer. And when uh, you let go of that uh, controller, that uh, de-energizes the magnet and, and it falls back. Okay, so here's this adjuster. And see, if you were to turn it from the back through that slot, um, this little wheel going up, you can see that if it was going up from the other side, that would be expanding it, see, making this thread longer. So, and the other way, if it was going down, in the back be getting smaller so good to know okay so that's lubed up I put anti seize on there all right so it was about it was about there so let's try that and see where it sits and we'll just keep adjusting it now see the difference between this and an automatic adjuster is in an automatic adjusting brake it'll have the same thing but it'll have a little arm here that acts when the, the, the shoes are pushed to their maximum it'll pull down a little lever on here and and every time it'll just keep changing and adjusting it so it keeps the shoes uh, out to the inside diameter of the drum but on these older ones there's nothing so they have to be manually moved because you're losing material off the friction surface every time that they wear and you're losing diameter off the inside of the drum so eventually even if you've got you know half decent shoes and a good drum it'll, it won't be a, a breaking as effectively and that's how that's done. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you again here very soon on Everyday Projects. Bye for now.